So hi, my name is Vladimir Elistratov. I'm going to talk about new ways of going 3D with OpenStreetMap data. But first, a few words about motivation. Some time ago, I came across of beautiful maps of cartographer Ruben Atoyan, who resides in Minsk, capital of Belarus. It's beautiful handmade maps are done with a pencil. So since then, I have a kind of challenge to create similar maps automatically. But before going to complex thing, I decided to, done, to experiment with the simple things. So first, let's see so-called two and a half dimensional maps. So what is two and a half dimensional maps? It's just an ordinary map with a overlay of 3D buildings rendered in the oblique projection. So here's an example from the Russian company called Double Geese. And we have here some buildings rendered in the oblique projection above a normal 2D map. So my working tool is Blender. Blender is open source 3D platform. It has a strong functionality for 3D modeling. It can provide a photorealistic rendering. And it can also provide non-photorealistic rendering. And what is important, everything is accessible via Python. So the procedure is to generate a two and a half dimensional map is quite simple. Prepare 3D models of buildings, then georeference each 3D model in Blender with OpenStreetMap data, and at the end, arrange georeferenced 3D models according to the application. In our case, it's two and a half D map. So here's our sample model. I created this model myself. So to georeference a 3D model in Blender, I use OpenStreetMap data. Because every node in OpenStreetMap data contains geographical coordinates. So I wrote a plugin for Blender which imports an OpenStreetMap file. I use transverse Mercator projection for the imported OpenStreetMap data to avoid size distortion that we have with spherical Mercator projection. So the task is, here's our model seen from the top. And the task is to move the model and rotate it until it gets the desired position above OpenStreetMap data. So here we are done. Here's our model on the right position. And we press the button perform georeference, perform georeferencing and Longitude, latitude, and heading are written to the Blender file. And now our 3D scene is georeferenced. And now to two and a half D maps rendering, I propose two approaches. The first one, every 3D object is rendered in the oblique projection as a separate graphic symbol. Then I employ Mapnix point symbolizer to render those images at the center of the corresponding object. And the second approach, all three objects are rendered in the oblique projection in one image. And the image is georeferenced and rendered on the map as a raster la layer. So here is the first approach. For each model, a separate image is rendering. So the procedure is, here is simple. Apply scaling to take distortion of the spherical Mercator projection into account. Then simulate oblique projection in accordance with the desired angles of projection. Blender, Blender doesn't have built-in tools for oblique projection, but it can be simulated. Then adjust the location of the orthographic camera and its viewport size. So as in this picture, our model completely covered by the viewport of the camera. And then adjust the size of the resultant image. And this, so the size of the resultant image 
depends on the zoom. So at the end we get such pictures for each one for each desired zoom. So I think three zooms are enough. There's zoom 17, zoom 18, and zoom 19. And also a CSV, CSV table is created with a table. It has the following columns. So it's for each 3D object, latitude and longitude of the object, then the image name for the rendering for this desired zoom and the distance between the center of the 3D object and the center of the image. It, the distance is in pixels. And these entries are for all desired zooms. Then cut to CSS file for tile mill is quite simple. For each desired zoom we have here entry for the image and we transform the image so it gets the right position according to this distance between the center of the image and the center, the center of the model and the center of the image. So it's quite simple. Yeah, and here's the final rendering. Our 3D image is above uh, ordinary 2D map. It has an uh, obvious disadvantage. Buildings should not stay too close to each other. Otherwise, some sorting should be performed. And now to the second approach, one common image for all building models. In this example, we have two buildings models. One is on the top, and the other one is on the bottom. And basically, the same steps, but at the end, we have to, we have to generate a GOT file with GDAL translate. And then the, this uh, GOT file is used as a raster layer in Mapnik. So here's the resultant image. Here's our top model, and here's our bottom model. And now I'd like to proceed to the next topic of my report. It's about generating bird views. Originally, oh, so I forgot to tell that everything could be found in this GitHub repository, including detailed documentation. So now to bird views. Originally, I wanted to show how to generate large-scape nature environments like forests, lakes, and so on, but uh, run into some technical difficulties. So forests for bird views next time. But instead, I would like to talk about another different, another important aspect of generating large-scale 3D environments. Well, 3D modeling is tedious. It took me quite a long time to generate the model I used for two and a half D map example. And by chance, I came across an interesting approach of to simplify 3D modeling. It's called CJ Shape Grammar. CJ stands for Computer Generated Architecture. It was developed in the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, known as ETH Zurich. It, CJ Shape Grammar makes up the foundation for, of SC City Engine software. And this software can generate large-scale urban environment, large-scale photorealistic urban environment. So CJ Shape Grammar consists of shape rules. Each rule, rule iteratively refines a design by creating more details. And the first rule is normally applied to building outline, which could come from OpenStreetMap data. And CJ Shape Grammar is expressed in Python in my implementation and it's evaluated in Blender. So let's see a simple example. Everything starts from building outline, imported from OpenStreetMap data. So the first rule is applied. We make an extrusion of the desired height, and the execution is passed to the next rule called building. In the next rule, our volume is separated into front face, into, into a number of side faces and the top face. And the execution is passed to front facade rule, side facade rule, and the roof rule accordingly. We uh, make a uh, distinction between front facade and side facade because uh, front facade looks differently than side facade. It has normally uh, some entrance door and so on. 
And so here, let's consider front facade. Here we separate our front facade into a ground floor of the desired height and to a number of floors. So here we have a repeat function. It means perform a split as many times as the space allows. And we have also a FLT function. It means floating or flexible size. In this context, it means that the number of the cuts will be always whole one. So, and the same for side facade. Then continue with ground floor and floor rules. Here we cut the ground floor into number of window sections. So we leave some space for on the left side and on the right side. So here we have the width is one meter. And then we cut entrance style and the rest of the space is cut to a number of um, cuts. And again, we use here a repeat and float function. It means cut the rest of the space as many times as the space allows, and the number of cuts will always be whole. So eventually we get something like this. So we have entrance door, we have windows, and the same set of rules could be applied to arbitrary building outline, like in this example. So this, I, I picked up this building outline from OpenStreetMap data. Here we have a front facade and a red door and a number of windows. So basically that's, that's what I have done so far. And the idea is to write some code that generates 3D model instead of tedious 3D modeling. So the future work is quite obvious. It's to support roofs, support textures, support placement of 3D assets like windows of facade decorations. So all the code will be available at my GitHub account. Yeah, and that's basically all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, what have you already implemented? Uh, translation from CJ to the Blender scene or uh, translation from uh, OpenStreetMap data to the CJ instructions. Mm -hmm. So you probably know what original CJ language is. Uh, I, I understand that uh, original CJ language is uh, just uh, commands to create a 3D model. And uh, what mm -hmm. have you done? Uh, do you have a generic... I've done what, what I've shown in the example. Start from the import, everything is done so far. Import OpenStreetMap data into Blender, then evaluate each rule and generate what we have seen here. So, so you take uh, the OpenStreetMap data and uh, yes, take import into Blender. external file with the CJ instructions? Yes, yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. And then cut and split and so on. Yeah. Textures are not done, the roof shapes are not done. Okay, we will help you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you think about uh, generating uh, CJ scripts uh, using the OpenStreetMap data uh, with tags uh, such as uh, building height and uh, maybe building parts and maybe building uh, mean height? <laughs> yeah, that's one idea. But to generate a realistically build a looking building, is, it's not enough. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that's one obvious start. idea. Yes, I agree. Yeah.
Okay, another question? Okay, then I would say thank you very much. And